Now the time that we have designated as the start of a brand new year, it has come. And though time has changed, there are still a few things that remain constant on our journey through life. As scripture states and from what we have learned from our very own personal experience, one of those constants is the Lord. All right. Mm -hmm. God, we know, is the same today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Now, with the changing of the year, we have new aspirations. Things seem to become new when the year changes over for us. Mm -hmm. We have all of a sudden new hopes. We have all of a sudden new dreams. All right. And we would certainly desire to see these aspirations, these hopes, these dreams. We would certainly want to see these things become a reality. Mm -hmm. And while we look ahead to seeing these dreams become reality, we find that one of the other constants in life presents itself to us. We'll find that that constant we know for certain is that there are going to be hurdles. There are going to be obstacles. There are going to be trials. There are going to be tribulations yeah, yeah. that we will face as we try to see our dreams become a reality in this new year. We know this from years past. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of us, we will clear these hurdles while others will struggle to clear them. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the year, some will feel accomplished while others will feel empty. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is that some will feel that they did not profit they will feel that they did not accomplish. They will feel that they did not gain anything throughout the year. All right. All right. Now, the question is, why will some feel satisfied in their hearts while others will feel empty in their hearts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here is where another constant in life presents itself to us. But this constant in life, it presents itself to us in the form of a choice. Yeah. Yeah. There is a choice that every last person that is walking this earth, whether boy or girl, whether man or woman, we all have this very same choice. Mm -hmm. The choice is whether we will depend on the Lord and his assistance or not. All right. Will you depend on, will you go to God for his assistance mm -hmm. to see your dreams become a reality or will you not? Yeah. Yeah. As you have heard me preach recently, the blessing of contentment, mm -hmm. the blessing of satisfaction, that is something that comes from the Lord. Yeah. Right. Now, some will go to him and some will not go to him to be satisfied. So the question of the year is this. Will you go to God to help you achieve all that you desire or will you lean on yourself, someone else or something else to bring you satisfaction? All right. All right. Now, here at the opening of the fourth chapter of James, we see James writing about the topic of gaining or receiving, if you will, the things that you may desire. As we dive into this scripture, let us understand that James was directing this message to specifically to believers. Right. Don't you understand that James was talking to believers here in this passage of scripture? Now we see here in the opening of this chapter, in the very first verse, that James, he asked a question here. And the question that he asked is, where do wars and fights come from among you? Right. And then ask another question we will see here. He says, do they not come from your desires for pleasure mm -hmm. that war in your members? Now, when we see these questions coming from James, 
We should understand that James was not talking about conflict between two individuals. Mm -hmm. He was not talking about conflict between two different commun communities or even two different nations, if you will. The conflict that James was talking about here in this verse was on a personal level. It was on an inner level, if you will, rather than on a bigger, rather than on a larger scale. Specifically here in this one verse, we find that James was talking about our inner turmoil. He was talking about the inner turmoil that believers will face, that they often may face here. Yeah, yeah. And we'll see here, mentioned later on in the eighth verse, that James, he mentions there in the eighth verse, a double-minded individual here. Double-mindedness, I want you to understand today that it will lead to inner turmoil that many believers face today. This inner turmoil between or in the believer, it comes from two contrary parts that work against one another. The two contrary parts being worldliness and spirituality. All right. All right. We find that worldliness and spirituality that they combat, that they are in conflict, that they are contrary to one another. They will fight against one another. Yeah. And the believer will decide what to do from either a worldly perspective or from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, those that go to God, they ought to be led by the spirit. Yeah. All right. And those that are led by the spirit will mm -hmm. always overcome the worldly nature that resides in them. All right. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, some are led to take part in worldliness. Mm -hmm. They do this because they have not truly turned to God. They have truly not went to the Lord. They are not led by the spirit. Right. They are led by worldliness. Mm -hmm. They are led by the world. We'll see here in my key verse for today that James writes that in order to gain, he says that, some will move out of lust while others, he says there will even murder mm -hmm. or covet. Mm -hmm. James even says that some will even take to striving in worldliness by fighting and by going to war. This mm -hmm. James actually means between two individuals mm -hmm. or two communities or even two nations of people there. Yeah, yeah. Now, one thing that I want you to see there in that second verse is that in all of this strife, in all of this striving, I want you to notice there that James says that they still do not have. All right. In other words, James says they go about in all of this worldliness, trying to receive, trying to gain, trying to profit. They do all of those things. Yet James says there plainly, they or you do not have when you take part in worldliness. Now there are many people that will approach trying to see their dreams become a reality mm -hmm. in this year. Mm -hmm with a mindset that is driven by worldliness right. instead of a mindset that is driven by the spirit mm -hmm. instead of a mindset that is being led by the spirit, they will allow their minds to be led by the world. Yeah. All right. And as you have heard me say on several occasions, the only way that one can experience the blessing of satisfaction, the blessing of contentment, is through God. The only way that one can truly be satisfied in their hearts, yeah. the only way that one can truly be happy in their heart or feel joy in their heart is through the Lord, our God. Right. Yeah. You see, James, he was talking about profiting here. But I want you to understand here that James was talking about profiting. He was talking about being rich, yeah. not in the world, uh -huh. but being rich in the spirit, uh -huh. 
in your soul. Again, we often get hung up on getting rich in the world where that should not be the believer's focus. I hope the believer hear that today because there are many believers that their singular focus in life is to get rich in the world instead of being rich in their soul. I would tell anybody that will listen to me today that I am a rich man. No, I'm not rich in the world, but I am rich. You better believe this in my soul. You see, I I don't concern myself with things that are of this world. I don't concern myself with the so-called riches of this world because my soul is already full. I don't need the riches of this world to bring about a temporary happiness in me because my soul has been satisfied by the Lord. And because my soul has been satisfied by the Lord, my soul is always rejoicing. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. There are many empty souls wandering around in our world today, believing that they are rich because of their worldly possessions. All right. All right. Yet on the inside, mm-hmm. they are as empty as can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, here in my key verse for today, mm-hmm. James, he says to them, though you may think that you are happy, though you may think that you have everything it is that you could ever want. Mm -hmm. He says, you do not have. And then he gives a reason as to why they don't have the happiness that they wish that they could have. Mm -hmm. There are many people who believe that they're rich today. But every day they have to wake up and try to find happiness. And James, he says here, you do not have because you do not ask. Is what James said there. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that someone may ask is, well, what don't I have? (laughs) Because someone may be saying to themselves right now, this very minute, hey, I got everything that I want. I I got everything that that I could possibly want. Preacher, you are wrong. Pastor, you ain't right here because I'm happy. So, so what do, what do they not have? I want you to understand here again, what they don't have is a spirit that is satisfied, a soul that is full. You see, James, he was not concerned with what Jesus called was mammon. All right. James, he he was not concerned with mammon. He was not concerned with the riches of this world when he wrote this. Mm -hmm. James's main concern was the soul. Again, I tell you today that he was talking to the believer and he was concerned about the believer's soul here. Mm -hmm. And he was concerned about whether or not the soul would be filled, Mm -hmm. whether they will feel accomplished, Mm -hmm. whether they will feel satisfied in their hearts. That was James's main concern. That ought to be your concern today as well. You ought to be concerned about your spirit, your soul today. Now, in order for us to feel accomplished and satisfied in our soul, we see James essentially tell us to do one thing here. There is one thing that James wanted the believer to do here Mm -hmm. that we will see from this passage of scripture. James, he essentially tells the believer to go to God. That's all James wanted the believer Mm -hmm. to do there, to go to God Mm -hmm. instead of using worldly tactics. Mm -hmm. Instead of being led by the world, James desired for the believer to be led by the spirit. The spirit again is God, God, the father, Mm -hmm. God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. Now, the tactic of going to God, I want you to pay close attention to here. 
to what James is talking about here in my key verse. He's, he said that we ought to ask. So James, he was talking about prayer. Was he not? He, he was talking about prayer here. He was talking about going to God in prayer. Again, note that James said to those who do not have, he said again that they do not have because they do not do what? They do not ask is what James said there. Now to ask uh, the Lord, I want you to understand is to make supplication. You hear me say that word often. Now, it has been a while since I have focused intently on prayer in the sermon, but I want to focus intently on prayer here today. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to encourage all of you to make 2022 a year of diligent and fervent prayer. Yeah, yeah. It's time for us to pray again. If you've ever stopped praying, it is time for you to pray again. Now with prayer, scripture shows us that there is actually a right way to go to God in prayer. Scripture shows us that there's a right way to go to God in prayer and a wrong way to go to God in prayer. And we'll actually see James touch on this in the third verse here in the fourth chapter. He touches on this thought when he states that some do not have because they ask amiss. James says there. Now, for those that are wondering what that is all about there, this is to say that some go to God and they ask wrongly mm -hmm. or they ask for the wrong purpose all right. or the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah. They ask amiss. Mm -hmm. So somebody may ask now, well, preacher, pastor, what is the right way to pray? I'm concerned, pastor, whether or not I am praying the right way. What is the right way that that I should go to God in prayer? Someone may ask. Well, the right way in which you ought to go before the Lord is humbly. You ought to go before God humbly and you ought to go before the Lord digitally. Yeah, yeah. This is shown to us through Jesus's telling of the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Mm -hmm. If you turn over to the 18th chapter of Luke's gospel, All right. look at the ninth through the 14th verse there in the 18th chapter of Luke's gospel. You will see Jesus telling of this parable, mm -hmm. uh, the Pharisee that prayed to God All right. and the tax collector that went yeah. to the Lord in yeah. prayer. In the 11th verse, Jesus, he tells us that the Pharisee went to the Lord in prayer. And when the Pharisee prayed to the Lord, Jesus tells us that this Pharisee exalted himself. That's right. That's right. Jesus, he tells us that this Pharisee glorified himself mm -hmm. before the Lord. All right. He, in other words, praised himself for who he was. Now, we should understand that even though this Pharisee went before the Lord, he went to God All right. and he prayed to God. Mm -hmm. We should understand that in his heart, he went before the Lord. He asked, he prayed to God. He prayed amiss. Yeah, yeah. This Pharisee, in other words, he prayed wrongly. He prayed for the wrong reason. He prayed for the wrong purpose. And I tell you, there's a right way to go to God. And there is a wrong way to go to God. I want you to know the right way to go to God. That's why I'm sharing this message with you today. I want you to go to God and I want you to go to him the right way. Now we'll see here the tax collector who went before the Lord in prayer. And in the 13th verse there in Luke's gospel, Jesus tells us that this man went before the Lord. He went before the Lord differently than the Pharisee. That's right. The tax collector, Jesus tells us he went before God humbly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the tax collector, he acknowledged exactly who he was mm -hmm. as he sought God's help and he sought God's mercy. Yes, sir. He realized who he was right. and he showed that he depended on the Lord. Yeah. He was not prideful. He was not filled with ego and he was not boasting. He did not exalt himself. He did not glorify himself. He did not praise himself. He was given the praise to God because he humbled himself. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll see there in the 14th verse that of this man, Jesus taught that the tax collector would be justified yes. and that the tax collector would be exalted right. all because he went to God and he went to God the right way. All right. All right. That is right. And Jesus, he commanded that he come, uh, commented there that those who exalt themselves will be humbled oh, yeah. while those who humble themselves will be exalted will be glorified, will be blessed by the Lord. Now, yeah, yeah. I do believe that there are those who live in our world today who do make an attempt to go to God in prayer. All right. And I tell you, that's a good thing. When you are making an attempt to go to God in prayer, that is a good thing. However, we must make sure that when we go before the Lord in prayer, that we're doing so properly, All right. that we're doing so the right way. Again, that is with a humble heart. When we go to God and when we go to him the right way, I tell you today that the Lord will reward us, not just a little bit. All right. God will reward us greatly. Mm -hmm. Now, while prayer is life to some, on the other hand, prayer is a joke to others. Mm -hmm. As right. they go out and they grind and they hustle to make their dreams become a reality. Yeah, yeah. I don't want prayer to be a joke to you today. All right. All right. Turning to the Lord for yeah. these individuals is simply not on the table in our world today. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, is, again, James was talking to believers here is why do some refuse to go to God in prayer? Now, of course, we know that there are those who do not believe in the Lord. And so because they don't believe in the Lord, they're simply not going to go to him. We already know that okay? that's not something for us to discuss here today. The truth be told, there are many who say that they believe in the Lord, but they seldom do pray a prayer to God. Seldom do they utter a prayer to the Lord. Seldom do they go to God. This, I tell you, it, it bothers me. This, I tell you, that it scares me a little bit. There are some who do not go to the Lord because they feel that they have already been covered in prayer. Yeah, yeah. They feel that mom and pop's prayer has covered them or the prayer of another have covered them. You see, I was one of those believers in my younger years. I did not feel that I needed to pray for myself because I knew mom and dad was already praying for me and their prayers were good for me. So I didn't think that I needed to pray for anything. Right. Yet I was baptized when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I had confessed that I believe in the Lord, yet I was a believer that was not praying. Right. And there are many believers who are just like this. They feel that the prayers of another covers them, but in actuality, Every last person living in our world today is in need of going to God in prayer. Right. Yeah. Now, there's another group of believers that feel that they don't have to go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that they need to pray for themselves because they already have everything in control. They feel that everything is in control, that they <clears throat> are in charge. All right. Now, I tell you today that this is a misguided thought to have because no person 
ever has anything or everything under control. To have this thought would suggest that there is a lot of ego and pride within the believer. And this is dangerous. We need to put this kind of mindset in check because again, we say that we are genuinely believing in the Lord. We cannot be filled with such ego. We cannot be filled with such pride as well. You see, there are far more things that are beyond our control than in our control. And in that very thought, we should feel moved to go to God because we believe in our hearts that the Lord has all authority. Yeah. All power we have said in recent weeks are in Jesus' hands. Oh, yeah. So we should feel moved in our spirit to go to the one who has all powers in his hand, oh, yeah. who truly has everything under control. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Now, there is one last group of believers that I want to mention here for a second here All right. that do not feel that they have to go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. This group does not pray to the Lord because they believe that the Lord already knows what they require. Mm -hmm. They believe that God already knows what they need. And again, I will tell you this. I'll be right up front with this. I'll be truthful about this. Mm -hmm. I was one of those believers. All right. I felt that because the Lord already knew what I needed, that there was no need of me at, uh, going to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. He already knew what I needed. And because he already knew what I needed, then he would just give it to me. All right. So in my heart, I felt like, what was the point? Why would I need to pray? God already knows what I need. And again, because he already knows what I need, then he's going to give it to me. I don't know if any of you have ever felt that way before. Maybe y'all are better than me. Maybe you've never, maybe you've never felt like that before. Maybe that's just a me thing. Little, little did I know. Little did I realize that I needed to go to God and that I needed to go to God in prayer. Let me show you what I mean here by this. In the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel in, in the eighth verse, Jesus, he taught the disciples how to pray. And in the eighth verse, he told the disciples very plainly that the father knows the things that you have need of before you even ask. So those that have that feeling or, or believe that or know that they haven't thought wrongly. Okay. T to be clear, we are not wrong when we say that the Lord knows our needs before we ever go to him in prayer because God certainly does know our needs before we go to him in prayer. Amen. However, in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel, I want you to notice that after Jesus made that statement, mm -hmm. he does not say there that, Hey, there's no need of you going to God in prayer. Jesus, he does not say that we don't need to go to God in prayer. Look at what Jesus does there. Jesus, he goes on to teach the disciples how and what to pray to God for and about. Even though the Lord already knows our needs, even though the Lord already knew their needs, Jesus told the disciples to thank God, to honor God, to pray for his forgiveness and mercy, and again, to make supplication, to let their supplications be made known to the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. So to all who profess to believe in God today, we should understand that we all need prayer. Oh, yeah that we all need to go to God in prayer mm -hmm. to further show this is the case. I want to direct your attention to the book of Isaiah for a brief moment. All right. I know I got you turning in the Bible, but y'all know how I am mm -hmm. in the 65th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord spoke through the prophet 
And he spoke there in the 17th verse about a new heaven and a new earth, which is also spoken of in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. The Lord said of the days of eternity in the 24th verse in the 65th chapter, the Lord said that it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. And again, the Lord was saying this of the days of eternity. Now, heaven, as we know, it will be a place where there will be no burdens. We know that heaven will be a place where there is no struggles, where there will be no troubles. We are told in the book of Revelation that the Lord will wipe away every tear. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord said that in heaven there will be no more death, mm -hmm. that there will be no more sorrow, that there will be no more crying, is what the Lord said in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Yet, yeah, from what I have shared with you today from the prophecy of Isaiah here, is that scripture seems to suggest that even though we will be in heaven, mm -hmm. not only will we be moved to worship the Lord in our spirit, we will still desire to go to God and to call on him in our spirit. Yeah. Okay. Even while we are in heaven with the Lord, we are going to be moved in our spirits to give him praise, mm -hmm. to worship him, and to call on him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said that even before we call on him, that he will answer. All right. And while we are still speaking, that he will hear. Mm -hmm. We're going to be even praying in heaven. Yeah, yeah. We're not in heaven yet. Mm -hmm. We, we, we are in heaven yet. We still are here on earth, aren't we? We, we are still a part of this, this physical reality living in this world. I tell you, in the world, I believe that we need to go before the Lord and that we need to call on him because in this world, there are burdens. In this world, there are struggles. In this world, there are troubles, yeah. there are heartaches, mm -hmm. there are pains, right. there are sickness, mm -hmm. and, and, and we need to go to God every opportunity that we get, and we need to make our supplications mm -hmm. be made known to him. I don't know if you hear me here today. Even though the Lord may know our needs beforehand, I tell you today that it is certainly good for us to go to God in prayer. Praying to the Lord, I want you to understand today it is the first sign of our faith in him. It is our first sign of our dependence on him. Whether we truly trust and believe in him today. Our prayer life, I tell you today, it is also indicative of our relationship with the Lord. As we was talking about in our Sunday school lesson today, our prayer life is indicative of whether or not we are truly in fellowship with him. As we say, every good relationship has good communication and prayer is our line of communication with the Lord. Now, when there is little to no communication in a relationship, we would say that that relationship is on the rocks. We would say that that relationship is, is, is barely hanging on, that that, that that relationship is in trouble and that relationship, it is doomed. So I feel I must ask this question today about your fellowship, about your relationship with the Lord. Is your relationship in good standings with God? Is, is your relationship with God in good standing or is it on the rocks? How often do you go to God? How often do you go to God in prayer? How often do you lean on, depend on, and trust in him? How often are you talking to God? 
If you aren't doing those things today, I tell you that it is time for you to get off those rocks. It is time for you to mend that relationship. I tell you today that it is time for you to go to God as his anointed. When a child of God goes to him in prayer, I want you to know today that the Lord goes before them. When a child goes to God in prayer, God goes before them with special intent and with special purpose as well. And he does this. I want you to hear today without fail. Do you hear me today? God will go before you and he will do so with special intent with special purpose, and he will do so without failing you. I don't know if you hear me here today. Jesus, he said to his disciples, and therefore to us, because we are his followers, we are his disciples as well. And we saw this in our Sunday school lesson today. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, You will ask what you will desire. You will make your supplications be made known. And Jesus said that it shall be done for you. Now, this was a statement that Christ, again, I want you to understand, was making to all who are truly in fellowship with him. What you pray for, Jesus said, God will give, God will do, and he will do it without failing you. When the Lord moves before us, we are told that he can and that he will make the crooked places straight. We're told that when the Lord goes before us, that he will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I want you to understand today that every hurdle that stands to inhibit you, every hurdle that stands before you to try and stop you, to try and trip you up while you are on your journey, your pilgrimage, the Lord is going to remove those hurdles before you. God is going to knock over all of those hurdles that are there for the purpose of inhibiting you, of stopping you, of causing you to fall over. You see, those of us that clear these obstacles, these trials and these tribulations, we do so not by our own might, but by the might of God going before us. I tell you today that the Lord is ever faithful to his children and he desires for us to make it. He desires for us to, to overcome, Mm -hmm. to be satisfied in our hearts, to, to be happy, to be blessed. Mm -hmm. He desires for you to be lifted up. If you will, Mm -hmm. we can see this through the children of Israel as they journeyed to the promised land. Moses, he reflected on the Lord and he said to the children of Israel, He said that God is not a man that he should lie, Mm -hmm. nor a son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. Moses, he then asked the children of Israel a question. He asked, has he God said, and will he God not do? Mm -hmm. Or has he God spoken and will he God not make it good? Mm -hmm. Now, Moses, he would pass away and Joshua. He would assume leadership of the children of Israel as they entered into the promised land. Mm -hmm. And upon entering the promised land, Joshua, he led the children of Israel to conquering kingdoms. He led them to being able to get settled into the promised land. Mm -hmm. And at the end of his life, Joshua, he also reflected on the Lord and all that he had witnessed in his life. Mm -hmm. And he would say in his farewell address to the children of Israel, he would say the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn, Mm -hmm. meaning all the land which he had promised Mm -hmm. to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it 
and they dwelt in it. Yeah, yeah. Joshua said the Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. Mm -hmm. Joshua, he did said, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord, Joshua said, delivered all their enemies into their hand. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Joshua said, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken mm -hmm. to the house of Israel. Joshua said, all came to pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you, the Lord, when he moves on your behalf, he moves without fail. Right. God is a God that keeps his word. Mm -hmm. He keeps the promises that he has made to you. Amen. Now, some will say that <clears throat> God, he moves slowly. But as Peter stated, the Lord is not con slack concerning his promise. When we go to God, the Lord will answer and the Lord will move on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Again, Jesus said that anything we ask in his name, he will do so that the father may be glorified. Mm -hmm. The Lord, he will move on your behalf because he desires, as we saw again in our Sunday school lesson today, he desires for us to grow mm -hmm. and he desires for us to bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Lord desires for you to be blessed. Oh, yes. He desires for your dreams to become a reality. Oh, yes. God desires for you to be a success. Mm -hmm. He desires for you to be glorified and exalted by him all right. so that he himself can be a testimony to all of those that are in our world today. We ought to be living testimonies of all that God has done for us okay. and being a testimony of him. God will be exalted. All right. all right. Let us understand today that when we go to God, he is not going to fail us. Just as the Lord went before the children of Israel and delivered them to the promised land, mm -hmm. the Lord is going to go before us on our pilgrimage and he's going to make the crooked places straight mm -hmm. so that we can receive the premises that he has made to us. Mm -hmm. God is going to go before you and he's going to break into pieces the gates of bronze and he's going to cut the bars of irons. Any obstacles that stand in the way of you achieving your aspirations this year, I want you to hear from me here today. Mm -hmm. God is going to remove those obstacles before you. Mm -hmm. Those hurdles are going to be taken away yeah. from you. For you who already go to God, I pray that you continue to do so in this new year. Mm -hmm. And I pray you continue to do it all year long. Mm -hmm. All of you who do not go to God, I pray that you make this year the year where you will choose to go to him. God is waiting on you. God wants to see. He wants you to come to him and he wants to hear your voice. So I pray that you make this the year of prayer where you will go to God and where you will pray to him. I know firsthand that the Lord will indeed make a way out of no way for you and that your dreams will become a reality. I've seen this firsthand last year, and I've seen it before in the past as well. And again, God is the same yesterday as he is today and will be tomorrow. And I know that the Lord will truly make your soul satisfied and that he will fill you in your spirit and that you will be glorified and that you will be exalted, not by man, but by him. Amen. 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 Amen.